Yeah, it seems to me that whatever we say, we say out of our basic conviction, our basic conviction for truth, uh, for God's justice, mm -hmm. and for God's grace in our fallenness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that, I, well, obviously it depends upon how old the child is <laughs> <laughs> and, and what sorts of things. I can think of uh, the way that I would talk with a, uh, a child and how it might go, but you know, it strikes me that I'm probably in my, in the sort of imagining the conversation in my head, I'm probably imagining a white child. And I would be interested to hear from your perspective how you think what I have to say would come across to an African American child, mm -hmm. African descent young person. Sure. So, you know, you know, what happened, I would say a man shot Trayvon Martin is a terrible, terrible thing, wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Then I can imagine the child asking me, why did he shoot him? Well, this is where it starts to get difficult because um, I want to be fair to everyone. But in that, I also have to express the reality as I understand it. I would say that, well, the man says that Trayvon attacked him. Hmm. But I have not seen or heard any proof that that is, in fact, the case. The man has said that. But, you know, I would say to the child, I would say, we must always look hard for the truth. Sadly, in our country, there are people who will think bad things about someone because that person is black. Trayvon was black. And we need to be sure that when we are talking with people, we were really looking at everything that happened. Now, I hope that, I think that more will come out. We will learn more about this situation, about this death. I hope that we do. But for now, we have to recognize how sad and wrong and tragic this killing was. Now, I could imagine the child then saying, is the man going to be punished? My answer to that would be, I don't know. But as this comes about, it is our government's job to see that evil and wrong are punished. Well, the first thing that I would respond to uh, sort of your scenario of how you might go about this uh, and you're having asked um, sort of my uh, observation about that is um, and how it might come across is I absolutely believe that um, often younger people um, and so we're using child in a very broad sense um, but what, what I get from young people is they, they read authenticity. Mm -hmm. So they know whether we're being, or anyone is being, uh, often uh, at an intuitive level, authentic about who they are um, and about what their convictions are. So I think to the extent that you and I would have the opportunity, the gift, and the privilege of engaging a younger audience, uh, whether individually or a group, on this conversation, the first thing is we've got to be real. Uh, about who we are, what we think, um, and hopefully not come across as uh, if we if we know everything, uh, including what's in their minds. But so authenticity would be the would be the byline. Uh, the second thing that I would want to uh, make sure is communicated, um, uh, and you talked earlier wonderfully about complexity and complexity in this situation is um, that in the broadest sense in which we use it, we may be talking about an incident um, that occurred between 
to people of color. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. um, and so again, I don't know how uh, Mr. Zimmerman self-identified. I know what I've heard in news reports about something of his um, um, heritage, mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't have, you know, uh, like a list of uh, all of the uh, uh, ethnic ingredients, uh, et cetera, but uh, in, in the broadest sense in which we use that term, people of color. The third thing is, it seems to me that relating to young people um, and relating to any audience, this is what I've been thinking about for a few days, uh, is a mica moment. And by that I mean it is a moment in every way possible for us to model and to practice doing justice, loving mercy, mm -hmm. and walking humbly with God. Mm -hmm. And it may be that it's that last piece that's the most challenging because we all have some sense of what's just <laughs> and what's right. Um, uh, and we're all convinced in our own minds of what that is. Doesn't mean we're wrong, but we're convinced of it. And so this is a moment for humility, humility, humility. Humility does not make me back off of the call for justice for the truthfulness that you named uh, so so articulately. But this may be a Micah 6, 8 moment. Yeah, and that's true. I was thinking more in terms of um, the difficulty in translating that to young children because racism is a, is an, uh, you know, is a uh, abstract concept. Mm -hmm. Even justice is, mm -hmm. in many ways. But I think they understand truth. Mm -hmm. And I would really want to press that hard uh, because the, um, I think that they also value truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, that, and that's, that's where I really connected with uh, this, this notion of authenticity. Oh, right, are, are we right, for real, right, right. which again is, is squishy and amorphous, and yet if we're not dealing truthfully, um, uh, a young person might say, well, you're not for real. Well, they, and they pick <laughs> and it up in they a They pick it up, yeah, absolutely. Just, but I dare say lots of people pick it up. It's oh, not yeah, only yeah, generational. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's generational if, if, if we as people, um, let's say, uh, who are parents and maybe grandparents <laughs> are talking to someone that's a, that's a teenager um, and, uh, and, and what have you. So uh, we do have to take these uh, more abstract concepts. But I, I also think that, that that young people very early um, get a sense, um, depending upon how they're shaped, of what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think some of our basic teachings uh, as people of Christian faith, I mean, we teach uh, because we believe that's what the Bible proclaims and we believe that's what the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus proclaims, that we are called by God to love everyone and to treat everyone with fundamental uh, fairness. I don't think we're called to ignore the gift of difference, for example. Um, it's not a, right, it's, right. Not it's not a, a homogenization. It's not an homogenization, right, right. but we are called, we, I mean, we, this is what goes on in, in, our, in Sunday school or whatever we're calling it these days, yeah. in our programs of Christian formation and Christian education. Those are some of the early lessons that I remember uh, going to a little uh, then Methodist church uh, in, in, in Philadelphia about loving God, loving my neighbor, Who's my neighbor? My neighbor's everyone right. around me. So I think those lessons um, are, um, uh, I hope, not lost on us um, of what, but no matter what age we are, and they're still relevant when we're helping people to be formed.